So, first package is this one. And I bought this off of eBay. It's an Atari SF314 disk drive, which is the double-sided version. And it says defect or defect, which means not working. And I can already see that this eject knob isn't working. And thing is, I don't have power supply and I don't have a connection cable. I do have an Atari 520 ST, but we'll have to repair this and create both cables, which could be interesting getting one of these connectors. So let's check this out. I might mod this drive um, in terms of soldering directly to the uh, main board and not using this and maybe even here too. Paid five bucks for this. It's pretty yellowed as you can see, I guess. And so let's open this up and have a look inside. Maybe we can make out what's going on with this. have worked on these drives before but I really like the Atari 1040 ST because it has a built-in drive and on some machines you can even mod it without destroying the case to use a GoTech drive so I should unscrew this too from the bottom plate This PCB is just clipped in here, so we can just take it out. And these are pretty easy to work on. As you can see, there's not much going on here because the floppy controller itself is actually built into the Atari ST, even the very first ones. And you just have, have some simple um, logic here. Funnily enough, these only take five volts, so you could use a USB charger to build a power supply for this. And that is what I will go and do but first let's take a look at the drive and that never seen one like this seems to be slided in here and you have only two screws to open the cage so to say okay I guess there's no drive belt here is good but still oh, look at that and the eject mechanism works again so this was actually just a case of two two hard tightened screw drive head looks okay let's put in a disc so i have an s you know an hd disc here which is just for testing purposes and let's see what happens yeah slides back the mechanism and puts in the disc and this looks completely normal it's a bit hard to push out but i think with a little love and attention in terms of oil and some isopropyl alcohol to clean the head we are good here but i don't know yet so let me get some get some alcohol to clean this. Just scrubbing a little. Oh yeah, it's a bit dirty, but not super dirty. Other than that, there's not much to see here. Let's put this together. And then let's check if we can find out which pin is which and what is what. I have some schematic for this port, but I don't have that kind of connector because it's a female connector on the Atari STs. Also for the for the Atari ST power supply itself, not just for the drive. And I only have this five pin connector, which is just that here. 
I guess I'm going to solder directly to the board down here. I will just have to solder on the pin 4 and pin 3 line the plus 5 volts from the power supply which I have here which is a standard USB charger but it does have 3 amps so should be plenty and a printer cable because the printer cables have um, thicker so the schematics here which pretty much say that pin 1 and pin 4 are 5 volts so that doesn't quite correspond with the um, board I had there but you will check this and we'll check if pin 3 and pin 2 have continuity which are these two because they are both going to ground and this says male din jack so I'm checking the middle pin down here and the pin up here okay so this seems to be correct and then there should be pin 1 and pin 4 which don't have continuity but they don't have to maybe they have two separate circuits on the board so let me check which pin is which here um, if this is pin 3 and pin 2 then we should have the same on the back side and pin 3 is here and pin 2 is here and we do so this seems to be ground so at least the pins are correct. I can solder to pin 1 and pin 4 and to pin 2 and 3. And that should give us some power supply. So let's do this. So first we kill another USB cable. You can, I guess, use a standard USB cable, a small one, just a charger cable. I will use this one because it has thicker cables. And thankfully these are color coded, so I don't have to do much guesswork which is which. meaning which cable is which cable. These cables are actually very well shielded, so pulling off the shielding is a good idea. Okay, we have four cables and you can see that these two are thinner than these two because these are the power cables. Red is plus five volt and black is ground. And since we do have two pins we have to solder to, we have to add some wires to this and then wire or solder these four wires to the connector over there. You will need all these cables. No, we won't. Um, let me just oh, look at that, red and black, just the way we need it. And these will be the solder points, so I will pretty much create a Y cable. Okay, the idea is to connect these cables, so the red ones and the black ones and by this creating two separate red and black lines which will then be soldered to the four pins and to connect these two to the USB cable. We will not be using the data lines because we only need the power and not the intelligence and then we can put this on here. You can see the buzzing. That's good news because it's immediately soldered on here. And the solder grabs just fine. And it's really fiddly if you don't put on some flux because it takes much more effort and time to get this together. Each ring number one and each ring number two. Put over here. Okay. And just like that we have two black and two red wires which we can now solder to the points on the board. And since we know that the description of the port is correct, it's this one down here. One, four, two, five, three. We can safely solder to the board using our schematics. And these say that we have to put five volts on pin one. And this is a five euro drive, so it's, it would be a shame if it died, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. 
So I'm willing to take a risk of just soldering and testing because no risk, no fun. We will, I guess, add some solder because there's not much on there. Oh, we could remove the pot entirely. I just thought that might also be an option. Yeah, but not for now. It's just for testing purposes. So I guess we are good by just soldering to this. Five volts on pin one, which is the rightmost pin. One is five volts. Four is also five volts. Two is ground. And three is also ground, which leaves five empty, which is correct. Looks like we have power cable. That should make us good to go. Oh, we can test it just like that without even putting it into the case. I always like my desk clean when things blow up, so let me see. Okay, here's our construction. And put this here, so if there's fire, you can see it. Let's quickly check if we did all this right. Pin one, pin around. So pin one is five volts. Pin four, which is next to this, is five volts. Two is ground, three is ground, five is empty. Awesome. Let me grab the charger, which is here, and put this in. So far, so good. And hmm. didn't explode. There was some movement over there. And it's turning. This looks promising. Let's insert a disk. I think. Let's turn it off again. Yeah. Definitely does some seek. If I'm not completely mistaken, the Atari disk drive does not do much on startup. So only if the Atari is connected and booting up, it does something. I will put this back into its original case and we will have to build a data cable to check if it works with an, with an actual Atari, I guess. So after a few months of waiting, there came actually a second disk drive up on eBay, which included the data cable and I paid 40 including shipping, which is an okayish price. So my USB power adapter for the disk drive is still in here. I have that data cable connected to the ST. So I guess we are ready for a test. Okay, so it does not recognize the disk drive right now. That's a shame. Let me check if this is yeah, this is on. Put in all the cables again. Still no disk drive. That's not good. So there should be at least some activity on the drive. It's in the in port, which is the right port for this. Check the cable quickly. Yeah, this looks good. Didn't check the cable for continuity, so it could totally be possible that the floppy cable is not in order. Try this. Ah, there's a light. Don't know what changed now, but it's trying to load. It's loading. At least it's seeking. Don't know it's really if it's really loading. 
Not even sure if this is an Atari ST disk. Uh, that doesn't look good. But it sounds like it's seeking. Let's eject the disk. The disk eject mechanism is not great. No, that's not seeking, that's just sitting there. Okay, now we get nothing at all. So, if this disk drive doesn't work, this can have two reasons. Reason number one, it's just dead or has some defect, or this is the older type of disk drive and it still needs not just the 5 volts, but the 12 volts. So, first thing I want to try is to switch out the drive mechanism from this drive into this drive and see what happens. And if that doesn't work, I will go and put um, a 12 volt step up converter into this disk drive, take the 5 volts, put it into the 12 volt step up, put the 12 volts into the board and see if it works then. So let's do just this now. So it kind of works, but doesn't quite which is really shitty because it's the worst place to start troubleshooting and I really hate working on disk drives it makes me very unhappy ah, I actually did some cable tying here so what I could do first would be to just switch these drives here and see what happens. Looks like someone tried to force his way in here without taking the screws out. But if we put them side by side, they look pretty much identical. It's just a different type of board, but this looks the same. So I guess these are just interchangeable. Then let's go and do this. Take this, put it here. Uh, no, wait, this is a drive I wanted to try. So let's put this here and this here. And this here. And we should be good to test. Turn this on. Won't find the drive. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming this is an under voltage problem. So let's go and put in this 12 volts step up converter. Okay, I brought out all the tools. This is set step up converter and works like this that you put 5 volts in here and you get uh, 5 to 24 volts out here and you can just adjust it with a screwdriver to the right voltage. So we will need the multimeter to set this to 12 volts and um, yeah, that will fit nicely in here. So I have to rework this here according to the schematics it says 5 volts two times but it actually should be 12 volts on the pin number four so i will try to put 12 volts here and then we see where that get, gets us so as you can see i just did two ground wires going to one ground here and two five volts going to one five volts here on the usb cable so i will put this in here I think and I will just wire number four to this and one of the ground lines to this and yeah, we should be good to go and then we'll put a wire from the four uh, pin number four to the 12 volts output here and that's pretty much it 
So let's do this. Let's just snip the line number four and use this. I will also snip one of the ground lines um, just to get some grounding here. Yeah. And here we have our five volts and that is what we are going to connect to the voltage regulator now. So we have the uh, plus and minus in and the plus and minus out. And this goes to the minus. And we take that one that's coming from the USB and put it in the, on the positive side. Okay, that's in there too. Okay, so now before we plug this into the Atari and connect this line, we have to first put this to 12 volts. So put this right here so you can see. So minus and plus, and you see it's almost 5 volts. What we have to do now is take a little screwdriver. So I'm turning clockwise now, hoping that the values will eventually change. I have no idea how these things are constructed inside. Ah, there we go. And now the voltage goes up, so it's clockwise to go higher. And we will set this to about 12. A little bit under, maybe. Oh, here we go. 12. Yeah, that looks good. So we have our correct voltage. So now all we have to do is to connect this the, this red line um, to this plus line here, and we have to get another ground line. And this time we will go with a number two because it's right next to it. Nice, and then we connect this blue wire to the ground line the out minus right here that's good and we connect the pin number four wire the red wire to the plus side so that should be it we have a 5 to 12 volt step up converter we have now 5 and 12 volts via the USB line which is nice and we have to put this in place somehow with some um, hot glue or some sticky tape. And then that should be it. So let's try this out. So I did reconnect the disk drive, the machine and all the stuff. Let's switch the disk drive on and let's switch the Atari on. And let's see if it at least finds the disk drive. No, now I'm almost concerned. Hmm, I am not happy. I mean, there's not much going on here. The whole drive logic is inside the machine. Let me switch the drives quickly. Maybe that will change something. Not that I believe it will, but let's try. So this is the original drive that came with this controller here. And still no drive. Hmm. Interesting. So what I could do is to solder another one of these cables to this one. Yeah, so I will take off these wires and put them on this board and see what happens. Okay, and just like that, we should be able to test this other board. So let's see how that goes. Okay, everything is set up. Let's give it another try. Here goes drive number two. Oh, so this is actually working, or oh, buzzing. Okay, we had this before. There's no disk in it. Don't know if it's just seeking. So let's switch drives and see if this changes anything. Always switch off your tech before you 
do anything to it. Otherwise, it's not good. So, next drive, next try. Switch it on. No sound. Switch it on. Oh, this is much louder. Oh, and here we go. Okay, that is a kind of progress. Now we need a disk. Oh, it's in here. Oh, even better. Yes, success. <laughs> so it seems this board is no good. No good board. Bad board. I just don't know why. Because there's not much going on here. Let's see if we can format this disk. Uh, let's do double sided. Let's call this Bob. And let's form it. Yeah, seems to work. Ah, oh, that is so great. But now I want to know what's wrong with the other drive. That's really bugging me. So there are almost no components here. The only difference between this one and this one is that this one has this resistor here and this one just has a bridge. So makes me think, what if I bridge this, would it work then? Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.